And then she had to overcome the barrier of his disciples' rejection. Matthew 15, 23, he says, And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. They were saying, Man, she is a nuisance. She just keeps crying out. She won't be quiet. That, that tells me that there was this, 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 this just didn't happen in a moment, right? She had been calling out. And uh, you, you would have think that she would have backed off and said, you know, enough already. You know, I come, bring my daughter to this miracle worker. And they're going to treat me like this. And, and uh, you know, I'm out of here. But she did it. She persisted. She was determined. And how many of you know that sometimes church people can not be everything they ought to be? Come on. Uh, my own grandmother was a very poor woman and went into a Sunday school class one time and and she was the first one there, and so she sat on the front row. And, and when the others got there, they asked her, Would you move to the back row, please? That's where the poor people sit. Can you imagine? But let me about my grandmother. She didn't stop going. Hello, hello. She was hungry for the word. She said, Okay, I just want to hear the word of God taught, so I'll be happy to sit on the back row. Hello? And so and she had the same spirit as this lady did. Because you'll notice the text go on to say the words of Jesus. Jesus says this He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And of course, she hears that. The disciples hear it. And it's kind of clear to them. That's why they, they, they say, send her away in this context. And now, now the truth is that what Jesus saying was true, right? The scripture tells us that the gospel is to who? The Jew first, and then also to all of us Gentiles. Okay, unless you're a Jew here today. All right. But, uh, but of course, we know eventually Jesus is going to become the savior of the world. But now he says, listen, this is my agenda. This is why I'm here. I'm here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And, and, and what she hears is prejudice, I'm sure. Probably she's thinking, why is he saying that? Doesn't he see that I have a need? But let me tell you what she did. She made a determination. And you see, the Jesus, what Jesus was after was Jesus wanted for her to demonstrate her faith, all right? And so she made a decision. She said, listen, it doesn't matter what you say. If you tell me to go away, I'm going to do something today. And she began to worship him, right? And I believe that she also had to pass over this barrier of her flesh not wanting to worship. I want to read you Matthew 15, 25. That's what it says. It says, Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Now, now this to me is an obvious sign that this woman was a woman of great faith. She was seeking Christ, even though he was silent, even though his disciples were saying, send her away. She chose to worship. And so I've got a question for you today. Are you still with me today? If you're with me, give me a little wave, all right? My question is this, when you pray and he's silent, do you still worship? Right. Come on. When you ask and it feels like everybody else is getting the blessing but you, do you still worship? When it feels like Jesus is saying, no, I'm not interested, do you still worship? And I'm sure that there was a part of her fleshly nature that wanted to just get up and go on and give up and get out of there. Hello? But there was something down on the inside of this little woman that she said, you know what? I don't care if the disciples are telling me to leave. I don't care if it seems like Jesus doesn't care about me or my daughter that he's not listening. I know who he is. This is the son of David. This is the one hey, that I've heard that does the miracles. And so she said, I'm going to worship him anyway. Come on. Do we have that kind of spirit in this house? Amen. Yeah. Are you willing to worship him even when things are quiet? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Jesus then says, some of the most difficult words, actually, in the New Testament to really get your head around, okay? He says, is it not right to take the children's bread and to throw it to the little dogs? Now, Jesus was just reflecting the culture of his day. And the part about this, this scripture 
that we can't fully grasp is that we can't grasp the tone and the nature of how, of how Jesus said that. Did he say it tongue in cheek? Did he say it jestingly? Was he smiling at the lady? How, how was this? And if you're really struggling with this, you need to understand that there were two words in Greek that referred to dogs, and, and, and one of them was a very ugly kind of a word that refers to ferocious scavengers, okay? And the other one was a little word for the puppy, okay? We can almost say that Jesus said this. It, it's not right to take the food that belongs to the children and, and give it to the little puppies that are around the table, to the little dogs, all right? And, and he may have said that with the twinkle in his eye, but I want you to notice her response this morning, okay? Right. She doesn't disagree. She didn't say, well, how prejudiced can you get? She doesn't say anything like that. She just says, well, absolutely. I don't want anything that belongs to the children. Whatever it is that you give me may not diminish at all what the children get. And then in Matthew 15 and verse 27, she said these powerful words. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs, even the puppies eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Amen. You know about the puppies. They lick up the crumbs, right? She says, I'm not asking for a full meal. I'm not asking anything that will diminish anything that you've got for the house of Israel. She said, all I'm looking for is just a little spillover of your blessing to me who's in this desperate kind of situation. Lord, those crumbs are going to be swept up anyway. Uh, they're going to be thrown away. Can't you give me a crumb? And the scripture tells us that when Jesus heard that, and I think, I think Jesus said, finally, I'm getting to the point where I want because you see, he saw faith down in the heart of that woman. Amen. He said, oh, great is your faith. And you see, I want us to understand something today. His silence wasn't about his indifference. His allowing the disciples to tell her to go away wasn't because he wanted her to leave. His statement about the Jews wasn't that he didn't care about the Gentiles. His statement about the dogs wasn't to say that she was a dog. Hello? No. Jesus went all the way from where he was at into that region of cheer and sight on because he knew that there was a woman who would press through every barrier. He knew that there was a woman who would say, I am so determined for my daughter that I'm not leaving here till I get what I want. Like that old song says, I will not be denied. I'm going to press through. I'm going to press in and I'm not letting go of you, Jesus, until you give me what I need. Amen. And the reason why all of this whole scenario happened, are you with me today, is because God looked down through time and he knew that there was going to be countless hundreds of moms and dads and grandparents and sons and daughters and loved ones who would humble themselves and cry out for their family and cry out for their children. And he wanted them to know, listen, if you'll overcome the barrier, if you'll press through, if you'll keep on believing, I'm going to answer. Don't take my silence as a no. Don't take the delay and says, no, I'm saying it's not going to happen, but just put your trust in me. And so I've got some word for you today. I don't know who this is for, but God's telling somebody, don't stop worshiping. Amen. Keep on asking. Keep on believing. And I believe that Jesus is saying, hey, I am who I say I am. He's saying I am the Savior. I am the still, the deliverer. I am still the Messiah. I'm still the one that can set people free. Come on, somebody. Let's give them a hand of praise because our God is able to do these things. The Lord said, oh woman, great is your faith. God immediately healed that daughter. That's right. Only twice in the New Testament did Jesus say, great is your faith. That's right. Once to this woman who was a Gentile that wants to a centurion who was a Gentile. That's right. Now, Peter, he was out there walking on water. You would think he'd say, oh, wow, great is your faith. You walked on water. No. When Peter started to sink, he said, oh, ye a little faith. That's right. Right? But to this woman, he said, you have great faith. And her daughter was healed instantly. So I want to ask you this question. 
At what point would you have stopped in your intercession? Would you have stopped at the silence of God? God's not answering and years have gone by. People think, well, why should I continue to pray? I'm going to tell you why you should continue to pray. Because God is a prayer answering God. No, because he will hear you. And so I said, well, you know, I, I stopped it because of the influence of other people around me. Even some of my family members said, hey, they're too far gone. Give up on them. They'll never get right. They're just a mess. You're just wasting your time. I'm going to tell you something. The devil is a liar. Did you hear what I've got to say? I said the devil is a liar. Let me say to tell you, every single person on the planet, amen, is precious in the eyes of our Father. Amen for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I'm telling you there might be moments when church folk can be a little bit judgmental. They can say well you know if you'd have raised her right or if you'd have done this or if you'd have done that listen don't listen to them. Put your eyes upon the king of kings and the lord of lords and trust in him. Maybe there's somebody here today and you've stopped worshiping. Oh, there was one time that you really worshiped. You'd come to the house of the Lord and you'd cry out and you'd worship the Lord with all of your heart and you had hope and you had faith. But time after time you'd pray and it seemed like nothing was happening. And finally you sat down and today you'd have to say, you know what? I really no longer have the shout that I once had. Yeah, you come to church, but it's not the same as it used to be. Well, I've got to tell you something today. It's time that you get your shout back. It's time you get your praise back. It's time you say, listen, my God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He's still forever married to the backslider. He can bring people to cry to himself. It's time to rekindle your passion for prayer and just keep on praying. Oh, man, I feel that this morning. Not only do we have to be willing to overcome all of I think Obstacles, and I think I'm, I'm talking to a group of people that's willing to do it. That's do I got anybody in the house that says, Look, I'm going to overcome every obstacle that's right. that the enemy throws in my way? Right. Amen. That the devil puts in my way. Amen. And he may even seem like God's putting him in my way, but I'm going to keep on because I believe that his name is Jesus the Savior. Yeah. And secondly, we're going to say powerful prayers. Not only have to overcome 